So I'm just going to do a quick video today about two ways in which sugar might be causing your hormonal imbalance. Um, so I am Molly. I'm the nutritional therapist over at parsleyandpumpkins.com if we haven't met before. Um, this video is going to be particularly relevant for anyone who has painful periods. If you have a known hormonal imbalance, you have something like PCOS or endometriosis, um, if you are struggling with infertility, or if you um, are are wanting to conceive even in like a couple of years if it's on the horizon of like two three years out this is a great time for you to start being aware of these things taking a look to see if there is something going on for you so that you can fix it now and have a much easier time later when you start actually trying okay I have a little story for you imagine a 100 year old woman who is a total social butterfly She's lived in this little town her whole life. She absolutely loves meeting people. She loves going out, talking to people, hearing where they're from, chit-chatting, and she's always looking for more social occasions, more ways that she can get out and meet people. Because in her experience, going out and meeting people has only ever been good things. She has only positive associations with this. So uh, we will we'll give her a name. So we'll call her Edna. So Edna is our 100-year-old social butterfly. So just remember her, and we will come back to how Edna is relevant to your hormones at the end of this little lesson. So if we're talking about our hormones and we're talking about how sugar impacts them, we have to talk about energy and how your body uses resources to control your energy. Energy, if you think of like most people think of sugar when it comes to energy, we have glucose, carbohydrates, like runners, you know, do a carbohydrate load before they go running because it has a bunch of energy. So carbohydrates are kind of like kindling in your fire. They burn really fast, really hot. If you've ever tried to make a fire yourself and you use that kindling, it catches on fire right away, it burns super hot but it burns super fast and so that's why you have to add something else on it or you have to keep you know supplying this um, this energy source so our bodies have three different mechanisms that it can use to increase our blood sugar so we have glucagon for like kind of basic day-to-day -day, um, getting some energy into our bloodstream we have cortisol and we have adrenaline for like those <laughs> times that we need a, a huge burst of energy <laughs> Sorry, that's Paco. He's very passionate about sugar and healthy foods. Um, so we've got these three mechanisms that will raise our blood sugar, but we only have one mechanism that can lower blood sugar. And actually, all that it can do is put extra sugar into storage. It can't say, oh, we have way too much. We need to get rid of some of this. All it can do is kind of save the leftovers for later. When we have a high sugar diet or just a very high carbohydrate diet like a processed food diet where we're having cereal in the morning a muffin some pancakes we're having you know a muffin for a snack this high carbohydrate meal we can get these dips in our energy and what we really want is consistent stable energy throughout the day hold on go go sit go sit okay <laughs> So we just want stable energy throughout the day, right? That's all we want. No one wants to be like crashing at 2 p.m. where you don't have any energy to do what you need to do. No one wants to be, you know, chugging three cups of coffee in the morning just to get going. We just want to get up, have the energy, and have it consistent throughout the day. So how this works in our body is we eat some food so let's say we eat a sugary meal something super high processed carbohydrate and we get this big burst of sugar in our bloodstream so the way that our body can handle that since it's like holy cow this donut is a huge amount of sugar this is way too much there must be some kind of like major stress going on if we are having this much sugar in our bloodstream so we need to get this energy into our cells so that we can use it so insulin goes around it's like a little key in the doors of your cell saying hey guys open up take this energy so that you can use it so insulin brings that down so all of our energy our sugars have gone into the cells for them to use or it's gone into storage if there is extra which it's stored in your fat cells 
So what happens here, sometimes this mechanism can get too low. Insulin gets a little too much gets pushed out and it puts a, it takes a little too much sugar out of our bloodstream and so then our body needs to raise our blood sugar back up and so cortisol is one of the mechanisms that it can use to increase our blood sugar especially if we have a lot of chronic stress in our lives which who of us doesn't <laughs> if you think you don't have chronic stress our whole just the way that our society is set up we all do so cortisol is huge for all of us, and so that will bring our blood sugar back up. So we've got this wave, and so this just keeps going, where our blood sugar goes up, and then it's too high, and so it goes down, but then it's too low, and so we need to bring it back up, but then it's too high, and we just keep going. So what does this have to do with your hormones? Well, both of these mechanisms, so insulin and cortisol, directly impact your body's ability to produce hormones in the correct quantity. So for example, cortisol, in order for your body to create cortisol, it uses kind of the same basic building blocks that your body would use to produce progesterone. So if you are one of those people who is aware of your hormonal imbalance or you have PCOS or infertility or you're just looking into that, I'm sure you have heard of progesterone. It's super important to have this in the correct quantities at the correct time during your cycle for everything to be working correctly. So if your body is prioritizing cortisol either to control your blood sugar or just because you have this chronic stress in your life, it's going to use those building blocks to produce cortisol instead of progesterone, which is huge. So the second way that this whole mechanism can impact you is that high amounts of insulin leading to insulin resistance have been shown in studies to increase testosterone production in women. So that also can very much impact all of your other hormones and your fertility. And even if you aren't trying to conceive yet, if you're just kind of trying to balance your hormones, you just want to be you know, happy, healthy in general, having your hormones balanced is huge. Your hormones are like what controls your personality and the way you perceive the world, right? Like if you have crazy PMS, it's your hormones that are making you irritable at everything for like a week before your period. It's your hormones that control that. So even if fertility isn't on your radar yet, making sure that your hormones are in balance is huge just for being generally healthy and happy. Okay, so what does this have to do with Edna at the beginning of our story? <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this example. I'm not sure if this is crazy or fun. I think it's fun. Okay, so Edna, our 100-year-old social butterfly, so let's do kind of a timeline because I picked 100 year old for a specific reason. So this whole video is about sugar and what sugar is doing in your body. So modern humans, what we know of as modern humans, the way that our physiology works and, and all of that, we've been around for about 200,000 years. We have had access to sugar for a few thousand years. People, you know, there's, I think the earliest reference is like 600 AD, I don't remember, I have it written down somewhere, but it's, it's been a while, but for a long time, it was very rare, it was very expensive, only the wealthy or the royalty had access to it in any kind of regularity, you know, it actually wasn't until 1874 when the British removed the sugar tax that like normal people were able to access it and could actually afford to buy it so that they could have sugar in their diet regularly. Like for desserts after dinner. Like desserts after dinner were not a thing until after 1874 because you could not afford it before then. <laughs> so we've had sugar in our diet for about 150 years. So if you think of, we've been on this, on this earth as we know of modern humans for about 200,000 years. We've had sugar available for 150 years. So if we use that same ratio, we say someone has been around for 100 years. You have a 100-year lifespan. That means that you would have had access to sugar for 27 days. 27 days out of 100 years. 
Isn't that insane? That just gives like a completely different perspective to like why our bodies are having such a hard time with this overabundance of sugar. Like sugar inherently is not that bad. You know, we have these three mechanisms in our body to raise our blood sugar because sugar had been scarce before then. And so if your, you know, tribe or whoever you were with found a um, honeycomb, what's it called? A beehive. <laughs> and you got to have some honey. That was huge. That's a major resource for us. And so we have these mechanisms in our brain that are programmed to seek out and find pleasure in sugar. But it's only been 27 days in the scheme of things that we've had access to it in this quantity. Isn't that insane? So our story of Edna, the social butterfly, that's basically like taking this 100-year-old woman who has only ever had positive experiences meeting people and giving her access to the Internet with no guidance on how to use it, no guidance on who she'll be interacting with, what you know the schemes are online so poor Edna is thinking this is just fantastic she gets to meet all of these new people but in reality she's given like all of her money to some foreign prince that she got an email from she's being catfished by like eight people trying to be her friend and she thinks it's fantastic <laughs> that is our bodies on sugar <laughs> It's chaos. It does not know what to do. It is trying its best, and we still just have these, like, pleasure signals going off in our brain saying, this is awesome. Let's have more of this. <laughs> so I hope that just, like, hearing that story kind of helps put it into perspective of why it is so enjoyable to have these processed foods, but what it actually is doing in our bodies and why our bodies are having such a hard time managing this because it is so new we have never had it in these quantities. Our evolution is to raise our blood sugar and all of a sudden we have way too much. Like we have never had an emergency need to lower our blood sugar until today. It's absolutely insane. All right, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I will see you guys tomorrow.